Lakshmi Tantra Chapter 21 Structure of a Mantra Chakra I salute thee who art the differentiated revelation of Shabda and Artha, sound and object, who traversest the six courses of creation, who art called the Avabodha, illuminating knowledge, that lies beyond these ways, and who art the beloved of Hari. O Goddess, the Matrika system of sounds from which all else springs has been fully dealt with. Now please duly explain the system and usage of mantra. Shri The greatest Purusha, person, the possessor of Shri, is the one absolute God, the ocean of the six attributes who is the divine inner principle underlying and pervading everything in all directions. I, Shri, am His supreme Shakti, identical with His I-hood, the substratum and Shakti of everything, omniscient and all-pervading. Through me the universe becomes visible in the same way as a mountain is reflected in a mirror. My Swarup, essential nature, is Bodha, intelligence, characterized by pure bliss. I follow the dictates of my will without hindrance, evolving the part of myself that represents Bodha. I become Shabda Brahman and continue to evolve further by means of the Kalas, the six qualities belonging to the Supreme God. The term Kala denotes Jnana, Aishwarya, Shakti, Bala, Virya, and Tejas. With these arranged in three pairs, I evolve by means of the Tattvas. O thou most valiant of all gods, the deities Sankarshan, etc., are represented by the tattvas. Again, I evolve by means of mantras through combinations of sounds. Now listen whilst I reveal the system of mantras. This science has developed out of Shabda Brahman and is endowed with millions of rays. Consciousness is mantra's main characteristic. Infused with the six divine qualities, it can be classified in four types. Sometimes it is bija, sometimes it is pinda, sometimes it is sangya, and at other times it is pada. Although bija, pinda, sangya, and pada together form a complete mantra, each of these is in itself efficacious as a mantra. Especially bija is often used independently. Therefore, these four together form a mantra complex appropriate to a particular deity. But one, two, or three of them may also serve for purposes of meditation. It should be noted, however, that the bija invariably constitutes the essential part of a particular deity's mantra. O Lord of the Gods, the four stages of conscious development of the individual soul, Turiya, Sushupti, Svapna and Jagrat, are represented by Bija, Pinda, Sangya and Pada respectively. A bija mantra may contain either one or two vowels. It may be formed by coupling a vowel with a consonant, or it may even contain several vowels. The haris, consonants, inserted between the bija and the remainder of the mantra are known as the pinda section, in which the consonants are sometimes connected with vowels. The Sangya 
is the name of a particular deity addressed in association with the words namas and pranava, a laudatory and vocative combination of verbal utterance with nominal concepts, fraught with recollections from the past, and used to further the purpose envisaged, is the essential form of the Pada Mantra. Together, these four sections of mantras make up a whole that bears relation to the nature of the deity addressed. Approached by means of a mantra composed of these four sections, the deity grants the adept the fulfillment of his desire. O Lord of the gods, the wise should refrain from applying these mantras until they can clearly distinguish between Kshetra and Kshetragnya mantras, those pertaining to the body and those pertaining to the soul. Chakra O Ambuja, please elaborate on the distinction between Kshetra and Kshetragnya mantras, which safeguards an adept from delusion and enables him to achieve speedy fulfillment of his aspiration. Shri In mantras containing a bija, the bija refers to the soul, the jiva, life principle, kshetragnya. The rest of the mantra refers to the body. In the case of mantras without a bija, the first sound represents the soul, and the rest represents the body. In the case of mantras consisting of only a bija or a pinda section, the a is regarded as the soul and the rest as the body. In cases of mantras without an a, another vowel is taken to represent the soul. In the case of mantras containing only vowels, the first matra, prosodic unit, refers to the soul whilst the body is represented by the second, and so on. When there is only one matra in a mantra, the sangskara, the subtle sound madhyama, characterized as transcendental, is considered to represent the soul, while the uttered sounds relate to the body. In the case of pinda mantras that contain no vowel, the first letter represents the soul, and the rest the body. Thus I have revealed which portions of a mantra relate to the body and which to the soul. If a pinda or bija appears in all three positions of a mantra, the beginning, middle and end, or in any one of these, that mantra is regarded as sarva kalika, applicable at all times. For example, Aum Kshin Kshi Namaha or Narayanaya Vishvatmane Hring Swaha can be meditated on for all purposes. When there is no bija in a mantra, the bija should be formed by taking the first sound and joining ng to it. In this way, the mantra can be made into a complete formula. For example, the mantra Aum Ganapataye Namaha, in which Gang is the bija. Mantras have the effect of making the Purusha, soul, active when it is weighed down with passion, feeling, whilst on its journey through the material world with its fourteen divisions, and also when it passes through the Pada course of creation consisting of Sushupti, etc., except in the Turiya state. Mantras that bestow grace lead an adept under the direct guidance of a preceptor and whose senses have been brought under proper control. Beyond the course of the phenomenal world, and the course of Pada by instilling into him a sense of complete detachment. And those mantras eventually guide him step by step along the courses of Tattva, Kala, and Varna 
to the state of absolute liberation. Having finally obtained grace through the mantras, and having shaken off all the fetters of worldly existence, the adept enters that eternal Brahman, known as Lakshmi Narayana. Chakra O Goddess, what are the qualities required of a preceptor and of a disciple? Which of the mantras is most efficacious for attaining the ultimate absolute? And how should that be taught to the disciple? I salute thee. Please tell me. Shri A preceptor should be endowed with all auspicious attributes. He should be a Brahmana, well-versed in the Vedas, infallible in performing his six duties, studying, teaching, performing sacrifices, officiating as a priest, giving presents, and accepting gifts. Unperturbed, engaged in performing the rites prescribed for the five different times of the day, of a pure nature, Master of the knowledge concerning the purpose of the Pancharatra system. He should be silent and exert himself in studying the nature of the Aksharas and Mantras. He should be neither fat, thin, nor short. He should not be blind in one or both eyes. Neither should he be diseased, deaf, an idiot, bald, crippled, or with defect in any limb, or in possession of an extra limb. He should not be a leper, verbose, passionate, suffering from skin disease, or easily overcome by greed. One should avoid a preceptor who comes from a low family, is a rogue, cheat, or dishonest. He should possess kindness, self-control, calmness, firm devotion, and should never overlook his religious duties. He should be truthful, well-mannered, skilled in drawing diagrams and yantras, completely rid of all sensuality, contented, and with a mind filled with compassion. He should have all the characteristics of a gentleman, be straightforward, and have an engaging smile. A preceptor possessed of all these qualities may be recognized as being a true Vaishnava guru. The disciple, too, should possess similar characteristics and be favorably endowed. He should be of a forbearing nature, keenly intelligent and devoid of anger and greed. He should always be intent on performing his duties such as bathing, worshipping, etc., and should be ready at all times to obey his preceptor. He should respect brahmanas, fire, gods and forefathers, and be disposed to gratify gods and the dead. He should be of a good family, have wisdom, and apply himself consistently to the study of the sacred scriptures. He may be a brahmana, kshatriya, vaishya, or shudra, as long as he is devoted to Lord Vishnu. After regarding himself as the disciple's preceptor and ascertaining that the pupil possesses all the necessary qualifications, the preceptor, who is God himself, should teach him all the mantras, and he should accord the same treatment to a woman who respects her husband never neglects her religious and social duties, has a clear notion of truth, and has obtained her husband's permission to become an adept. <laughs>